An inequality is a mathematical sentence where one side is either bigger than or smaller than the other side. So we're not dealing with two sides which are the same as we would in an equation where the two sides are equal. We are now looking at where one side is bigger than the other. If we just take a look at an inequality like this, negative x plus 3 is less than 6. We know that this side of the inequality is less than because the pointed end faces the left-hand side. So the left-hand side is less than and the right-hand side is the open side of the inequality sign. So we say that 6 is bigger than negative x plus 3. Now, <clears throat> inequalities behave very much the same as equations in the sense that you can add and subtract things from both sides and you can multiply and divide both sides. But there are one or two differences. So if we wanted to solve this inequality, we could start off, we want to get x by itself. So we start off by subtracting 3 from both sides. That leaves us with negative x is less than 3. Now, <clears throat> at this point, we need to be very careful because our x has got a negative coefficient. And there are actually two different ways that you might decide to go about solving this problem. The first option might be that you would keep the inequality sign exactly as it is. You would add x to both sides in order to get it positive. So you would then land up with x over there and you would subtract 3 from both sides. And that would give you x is greater than negative 3. So if I just write that solution down x is greater than negative 3. <clears throat> However, if you had chosen at this point to multiply both sides of the equation by negative 1 in order to make x positive, that would give you positive x and negative 3. But if you keep the inequality sign facing the same direction, you now land up with a solution that is x is smaller than negative 3. So you can see that clearly we are not getting the same answer. And this option here is actually the correct solution, the first one. If you multiply or divide by negative, if you wanted to use this method, what you would need to do is you would need to swap the inequality sign around. So if you are going to multiply, keep the x and the 3 on the same sides, but multiply by a negative, then you need to swap the inequality sign around. So that is the thing that you need to remember when you are solving inequalities. When you multiply or divide by a negative coefficient, you need to swap this inequality sign around. Okay, <clears throat> Let's just take a quick look at some of the ways that you can show a solution on, in an, um, an inequality question. If you are given the inequality symbols, the, the crocodile signs, the bigger than and less than, in words that is greater than or smaller than or bigger than and less than, okay, those things mean the same. On a number line, you would show that something is just greater than or smaller than by using an open circle above the number on the number line. And in an interval notation, you would use round brackets. Okay, we will have a look at this in an example as well. <clears throat> if you have got bigger than and um, equal or equal to signs or less than or equal to, whenever you have this little line underneath the inequality sign, that means that your answer is greater than or equal to or smaller than or equal to the number on the other side. You would use a closed circle above the number on the number line to represent that. And in an interval notation, you would use square brackets. Okay, let's take a look at some examples. Solve for the variable and give your final answer in interval notation. Okay, so remember that inequalities behave like equations. We can add and subtract things from both sides. The only time we have a problem is if we are going to multiply or divide by a negative number. So we start off here. This is a, It's got a fraction in it. The LCD is 4. So we're going to multiply both sides of the inequality by 4. That means 4 will go into 4 once and just leave you with negative a plus 2. 4 times negative 3 is negative 12. 2a times 4 is 8a. <clears throat> we now want to collect all the a's on the same side. And one of the ways that you can avoid this problem of this multiplying or dividing by a negative is to try and put your variables on the side of the inequality where they're going to be positive. Now, I can see here that if I chose to minus 8a from both sides, I would land up with negative 9a on the left-hand side. But if I rather choose to add a to both sides, I then land up with positive 9a on the right-hand side. Positive 2 subtract 12 is negative 10. 
divide both sides by 9 because I'm dividing by a positive 9. There's no problem. My inequality sign stays the same. And we get A is smaller than negative 10 over 9. Now, on a number line, if we were to represent that, negative 10 over 9. We are looking for all of the numbers. A represents all of the numbers that are smaller than negative 10 over 9. It's just smaller than, so we have an open circle above 10 over 9, and it's all the numbers less than that, so we draw a line out to the left with an arrow. We were asked to represent our final solution in interval notation, so we can see from this that our smallest number is going to be negative infinity because we're going to go all the way to negative infinity on the left here. Infinity can never be included in a set, so it always gets a round bracket. Negative 10 over 9. There was an open circle in my number line. We just had a less than symbol, so it gets a round bracket in the interval. <clears throat> right, if we take a look at number 2. This is what we call a compound inequality because we've got um, it, it being compared to something on two sides. So in this case, <clears throat> whatever we do in the middle, we need to do to the left-hand side and the right-hand side. So if we start off by adding 3, we need to add 3 to both the negative 5 and the 7. So we just get left with 2x. The inequality signs stay exactly the same. Negative 5 add 3 is negative 2. 7 add 3 is 10. Now we need to divide by 2. <clears throat> So that leaves us with x, 10 divided by 2 is 5, and negative 2 divided by 2 is negative 1. On a number line, we are now looking between two numbers. Our set of numbers x lies in between negative 1 and 5. And when negative 1 gets an open circle because x is just greater than negative 1, but x is smaller than or equal to 5, so we use a closed circle to show that 5 is included, and it's all the numbers in between those two values. So we use a solid line in between them to show that it's all the numbers. In an interval notation, negative 1 is not included, gets the round bracket. 5 is included, so it gets a square bracket. In your homework book, there are some examples for you to try, so please pause the video and try these on your own. <clears throat> right, number 1. Again, we have fractions. Our LCD in this case is 6, so we are going to multiply both sides of our inequality by 6. 3 goes into 6 twice, so we're left with 2 into y minus 7 is greater than 2 goes into 6 3 times, so it will be 3 times 2y minus 3. That gives us 2y minus 14 is greater than 6y minus 9. Again, if I want to put my variables on the side of the inequality where they will be positive, I need to subtract 2y from both sides. So we subtract 2y, so 6y subtract 2y is 4y. And if we want our numbers on the left, we need to add 9 to both sides. Negative 14 add 9 is negative 5. To get y on its own, we divide both sides by 4, and we get y is less than negative 5 over 4. In interval notation, <clears throat> y is less than, which means that all the numbers are smaller than negative 5 over 4, so it will start at negative infinity, and negative 5 over 4 is not included, so it gets a round bracket. In question 2, we have another one of these compound inequalities, but it's an all situation. So either q plus 2 is less than negative 8, or q plus 2 is greater than or equal to 14. So we need to solve each of these separately. If we subtract 2 from both sides here, we get q is less than negative 10. If we subtract 2 from both sides here, we get q is greater than or equal to 12. So, <clears throat> in interval notation, we have got two separate intervals. We've got q is less than negative 10, so it's the numbers from negative infinity to negative 10, not included because it's just a smaller than sign. And the Symbol in interval notation, just to remind you, that represents or is the union. So it's the u symbol, and it will be or q is greater than or equal to 12. So 12 will be the, um, so sorry, it gets a square bracket. <clears throat> 12 is the smaller number, and infinity is the greater number. <clears throat> 